Big numbers are what? Five albums, 22 million sold, seven Grammys, and that doesn't even count his years with Genesis. He calls his new album his most personal one, Both Sides. That's Phil's latest single, Both Sides of the Story. It is great to have him with us this morning. Good morning to you, Phil. No? Good to see you. Hey. One thing that you made a point of, an old radio dog like myself, I always read the liner notes on albums. This mm. is the first time you put liner notes on one of your solo records. Why? Well, I miss them. You know, as you say, they used to be on all records. And uh, I mean, I actually miss the, the big 12 by 12 kind of format of album covers as well. But that's long gone. But I just put the sleeve notes on really because I wanted people to, um, to know how the album was put together, you know? The, 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 uh, the feeling behind it and the way it was recorded, which was very home, home movie kind of thing. I mean, I did it all at my home studio, which is a little 12 track. And I did all the vocals there, I did all the keyboards there. And I eventually went into, when I ran out of room, I went on into the Genesis studio to um, carry on overdubbing, did the drums and stuff. But it's mainly a, a, a self-played, I played everything on it, I produced it and wrote it, and it's kind of very, very personal for many reasons, but that's one of them. Well, just looking at that video there, music with a conscience, homeless, uh, 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 domestic violence, things like that. Why address these issues in your music? Well, you either address them or you ignore them, you know, because they're there. And I prefer to, to put up my hand and say, this bothers me, everybody. Does it bother anybody else? You know, and see if anybody else picks it up, because uh, I think if we all did open the windows and shout we're mad as hell and put our own houses in order at the same time, maybe things could change. We, don't, we have to do some big U-turns, you know, in certain issues. We're going down a certain avenue with too, much, too many kids on the street with guns, too many kids on the street that are younger than they used to be uh, with, you know, weapons and just going out there and doing all this stuff. I mean, you read it every, every day in the newspapers, you see it every day in the news. And we have to understand why that's happening. You know, uh, Phil, last time we saw each other was in Cannes for the film festival, uh, and the band played on. Uh, you were in that movie on HBO. This was supposed to be the year you were going to attack acting. Mm. What happened, and, <laughs> and how'd you get turned back into doing an album? Well, I, I did actually dedicate this whole year to doing that. Um, but I, I periodically, we have our house in, in Los Angeles, myself and Jill, and uh, we were, we've been restoring it for a couple of years now. And every six weeks, I used to go back there for 10 days or so to check up on that, and Jill would do the same. And I would have my meetings, and I'd be, my agent, uh, Hillary, she has been me, uh, putting me together with some very, very nice people. But it's, it is a, a long process, you know, you, you sow the seeds, um, you educate the people that you actually do want to do it, and you are serious. But then you have to wait for the parts. I mean, there aren't that many English parts written out there in Hollywood. So while I was waiting, I started writing, you know, and um, without really intending to make an album until the end of this year. But the way things went, I started to accelerate a little bit. And then suddenly I found myself with all this material that I really liked and it was very personal. And, and I wanted to just sort of start following it through. And some of the parts that I actually went for earlier in the year, their shooting dates got put back and they, two parts I actually would have loved to have done, I couldn't do because it was slap bang in the middle of the album. So in a way, the old two career thing ended up being um, a bit of a problem. But I will, after the next, next tour, you know, the, the tour that's next year for this, you know, my solo tour, I'll give it another crack of a, a good year, because I definitely want to do more. I really enjoy it, and uh, I think I could do better, you know. One thing I've been, uh, just been thinking about, between Genesis and solo records, it seems like we've had Phil Collins singing all the time for almost a decade now. Do you ever worry about overexposure? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But unfortunately, you see, the way it is is, I mean, we do a Genesis album every four or five years and it ends up being a solo album every four or five years, but they do leapfrog. So yeah. every year or two, there's something. And the last couple of years, we've had live records because we've toured. And so the last five Christmases, I think, there's been Phil Collins records out. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I actually just I enjoy making the records. And, and of course, they're played. You, f you tend to forget about it. You put the record out, and then when you leave town, you think that's it. Yeah. But of course, the radio stations keep playing it. And uh, how can I miss you if you won't go away? You know? There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the new one, Both Sides, good record, Phil. Thank Thanks you. for being with us. Thanks, Mark. We'll be back.